more generally on thymus health. So besides taking growth hormone, is there any other way to kind of promote the health of our thymus? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to say. Um, like I say, if, uh, indirectly, it would help to take zinc, make sure you're not zinc deficient because whatever level of thymic function you have, you'll get the most out of that thymic function by making sure you're not zinc deficient. Mm. So we, we tend to develop zinc deficiencies as we get older. Zinc is needed for every, you know, all kinds of things in the body, even things that are, are not related to immunity. So you want to have it uh, in, you, you want to be replete in zinc anyway. Mm. Uh, but, you know, if you happen to be making a little dribble or gravel of thymulin, you want that thymulin to count. So, so make sure you take your zinc. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? I would think just generally good nutrition, uh, you know, not starving yourself too much. It looks like uh, from what I've been able to gather, we need to do much more research on this. It looks like, unfortunately, calorie restriction or at least severe calorie restriction is immunosuppressive, at least in humans. Mm. And so uh, we actually don't want people in our trials to be on severe calorie restriction because we think it may negate the effect of the trial. Uh, there are paradoxes involved with that since uh, metformin is a calorie restriction mimetic and we like it and we use it, uh, but sometimes we have to live in, in paradox. Uh, but we, we do know that if you, know, if you starve yourself, uh, that inspires catabolism. You know, you're, you're breaking down body substances, which is good because you're breaking down old molecules. So you can replace them by young molecules, but you have to replace them with young molecules and the growth hormone is about replacing things with young molecules, building up cells and, and, and building new things. Uh, and so you can't have those two things opposing each other. You have to have, you have to do them in sequence. You know, it's fine to be on calorie restriction for a while. And then we ask you to go off of that so you can build yourself back up again. And then you can go back on calorie restriction again after the trial is over. So that was actually a, a topic I wanted to talk about. So okay. you did talk, about like this, this kind of pulsing, right? You're yeah. building and, but what kind of cycle time? Because the trial is uh, a year, right? So yes. w w would it be like build up for a year and then autophagy for a year or, or is it, or would it be shorter cycle times? Do you have any view on that? Yeah, well, we're beginning to develop information about this. So uh, it depends on what you're trying to optimize. So we were trying to optimize immune system function. And uh, we discovered by accident that we had this other effect of reversing epigenetic aging. Mm. So we, we know something about what it takes to maintain your epigenetic age uh, over time. And for that, you may want to have a treatment once every five years or once every six years, something like that. Uh, we have less information about what it would take to maintain your immune system function over time. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's up for grabs. That's something we're extremely interested in learning as we go forward. But at the moment, all I can tell you is that if you look at the structure of the thymus, at least based on limited studies that have been done so far, it takes about a year to build up the thymus. And when you stop treating, the thymus begins to go back to where it was before you started treating, and that takes about a year also. So uh, we suspect that you could still regenerate the thymus better a couple of years after you, you stop regenerating it the first time than you could when you tried it the first time. Mm. Uh, but we don't know, and that's another thing we're really, really keen to find out. So we have a couple of guys from the uh, TRIM trial who are re-enrolling in, in TRIMX, and we hope to be able to see if we can regrow their thymus at least as well as we did before, even though they're much older now. Right. Yes. So right. The, there's a kind of the unitary theory of fundamental aging um, where, you know, so all the aging components seem to be related, right? If you reduce senescent cells, this raises NAD levels and um, yes. you see a lot of these things kind of interrelated. Correct. The, the thymus, is the thymus kind of a separate thing or is it also related? If I reduce my senescent cells, would that also help the, thy the thymus? Uh, well, it probably would because the senescent cells are producing in, in, an inflammatory response and that messes up everything. And the thymus is probably no exception to that. Uh, and 
uh, the flip side of that coin is if you improve thymic function and the thymic can, uh, the thymus can produce T cells that destroy senescent cells, then that takes care of that problem as well. So I think the, the message that, you know, you kind of set forth, which is that everything helps is right. You know, if you can help one aspect of aging, it tends to help other aspects as well. Okay, and we would hope that by improving the thymus, um, we that, that will improve other aspects of aging as well. So well, we know that. So if you give a transplant to an old animal, its brain works better. You know, if you give right. a thymus transplant to an old mouse, its liver works better. Uh, so yeah, the thymus is is uh, related to aging in a pretty deep way, yet to right. be fully understood. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.